how to speed up your wealth building process. It's Brian Preston, the money guy. That was perfect. I can't, uh, for all of you out there in iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, any non-visual medium, if you don't go to our YouTube channel for any other reason than just see Brian's intro right there, it is worth the time to go check out you that intro. You guys never know what I'm going to do. I, I try no to keep idea. it close I to the chest. Know you do. know, who knows how this is all going to play. It is, but here's the thing. I, this title, How to Speed Up Your Wealth Building Process, this has all been inspired by, and, and I'll get into the comments in a minute, but it is one of those things where wealth building is no different then muscle building, training. Mm -hmm. you're, you're going to start doing this process when you're building financial independence, when you're building assets, your army of dollar bills. There will come times where you have struggles, where yep. you hit plateaus, Absolutely. and you're trying to figure out, how do I get myself to the next level? How do I power through this thing? That's why I did the the whole thing, is because you do, you do need to figure out, how do you get past those roadblocks? Because they're going to come up. Yep. So what's the path forward to break through? I think it's so so interesting, Brian, that you kind of compared this to like uh, weightlifting or like losing oh, weight. I bet you did, Mr. <laughs> Pump. Keep going. Because I think, you know, when you first, when you very first start to like switch up your diet or when you very first start to like go to the gym and start exercising, you notice like rapid results. And I'm yep. thinking about 17-year-old uh, Brian Preston who heard about if I just save a hundred dollars a month, I'll be a oh, millionaire. I, you, I was about to say I didn't work out. No, 17. no, no. I, we all know that's not the case. <laughs> you but, saw the you, know, you saw the high school yearbook photos. Keep you going. Say, you <laughs> save that first hundred, and you're like, oh yeah, this is awesome. Like, yeah. And the second hundred, oh yeah, this is awesome. But then things just kind of happen. It's just like you say, you plateau. Yeah. You don't notice that same change that you noticed early on, and so. We think there are some ways that you can kind of reframe your mindset to push through those, that you can speed up how you build wealth. So let's talk about the first thing that I think can be a roadblock mm -hmm. that you need to work through is all learning, no action. That's right. And, uh, you know, I think, Brian, the thing that spurred this is, is someone made a comment to you, and I think you were offended at first, right? Well, it like, was it on hurt YouTube. Your it was on bit. YouTube. And I have the quote. I mean, and I will tell you, if we were better with technology, we'd actually have a screenshot of this, but we couldn't figure it out. So here's the quote, though, that at the time I wrote the show note. That sounded like a jab, but it, it was did really... It sound like a it jab. Was, it was like, more wow. me being mad that I, I didn't write down the date and the name of the person that made the comment. So it's more on me, up. not Daniel. But quote, great. But every time, it's mostly the same content. So this guy was saying, hey, I love your show. I love what you're doing. But man, it just sounds like you keep saying the same thing over and over. Is that kind of the gist of it? Well, it is. And this is, I look, I felt at first, I was like, whoa, that's kind of mean. That kind of hurts. But then I was like, you know what? He's on to something. Mm -hmm. Because I have, every time I have listened to, and, and this is probably a great transition point to kind of talk about what is it that makes you have all learning, no action. Yeah, I think so. If you think about some uh, folks out there, what do these folks or what are these items, what do these issues have in common, right? Yep. Uh, okay, so first, there's this oh. guy, right? Uh, we all know who he is. Dave Ramsey, our, our favorite friendly neighbor. Uh Oh, oh, there's oh. this guy. There's a really... Talking about hair issues. Always really, like, why did we take the sweatiest, hottest picture and me dressed up as Woody is, is what we went with. But keep going. Uh, there's also this guy. Clark uh, Howard. That's Clark Howard. He's a hu huge, huge... Big uh, influence on this show influence. back in the, uh, the original years. Uh, one of the most formative books in Brian Preston's life, you know, The Miller Next Door by Dr. Tom Stan Stanley and William Danko. Uh, the follow-up to that, the next to Miller Next Door... Uh, by Thomas Stanley and uh, and his daughter, Dr. Sarah Stanley. Uh, Everyday Millionaires, another one of the Ramsey Solutions folks by Chris Hogan. And then Dale Carnegie's up. That one went away fast. <laughs> <laughs> you, took a, you took away poor Dale Carnegie. But it is, I will tell you, and this is what the comment, and, and we did all that because we, we wanted to show you all those influences, but I have had this ex same experience that this listener who put the comment on YouTube is every time I listen to Dave Ramsey, after I've listened long enough, I know what he's going to say before he yep. says it. Clark Howard, if you listen to his show enough, you're going to know what he said, is going to say. You've probably, if you've listened to this show for the last 14 years, you know some of my stories. I mean, I got to believe when I'm talking to you on the phone as a client or as a prospect or even as a friend yep. and get to know me, Bo, you know all my stories. Absolutely. I mean, you even put them in the show notes sometimes. <laughs> Just tell them that one. You have that one all lined up. I mean, so it is going to be one of those things where – it, you're, it, you're going to notice it really is bound to happen that all the greats are preaching off of the same sheet That's music. Exactly because right. when you look at all those books, even like Good to Great, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, 
every time I read these books, even some of the Malcolm Gladwell stuff that I've I've put down, I'm like, there it is again. Yep. There it is again. There is, these are all benchmarks. Success has a proven track record and path forward. You just have, kind of have to recognize these things and then kind of come to peace with the fact that there's nothing new under the sun. That's exactly right. And so uh, obviously one part of bettering yourself and amplifying and speeding up your wealth building process is going out there and consuming, going out there and listening to what really uh, intelligent people or really well-thought people in whatever area you're looking for but at some point, you have to stop consuming. Yeah. At some point, you can't just keep listening more, reading more, hearing more, watching more. There has to be a balance where you actually take action to move forward. And Bo, you had, when we were talking about this in pre-show, I thought you had a great story that kind of tied into this. You talked about the journey you had as first when you took your first investments mm-hmm. Classes. Yep. You were a student in, in At investment. The University of Georgia, yep. Then you got your CFA and what that led to. And then there was you working in the industry for a number of years. Walk us through what you've realized on all learning and no action. Yeah, so what I thought was really interesting, I took my very first investment course. This is one of the first years in my major at the University of Georgia. And I under I learned about stocks and bonds and price to earnings ratios and all this stuff. And I was like, you know what? I got this thing figured out. So in that very first semester, I went out and bought a bunch of stocks because I had figured out how the stock market worked. Well, come to find out, I didn't know anything more than anyone else. It did not work out that great. So then I decided, you know what? I'm just going to go get even smarter. I just don't have enough education. So then I go get this CFA where I want to become a chartered financial analyst. It just means I go way deep on the investments. And instead of just figuring out how to go buy stocks, I was like, okay, I'm a CFA now. I'll go figure out these arbitrage option strategies, how to trade derivatives. And we started doing that just to kind of play around to see, try our hand at it. And it wasn't until I actually had uh, some 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 time behind me, right? So I had some some, season. some seasoning before I actually recognized how investments worked and how wealth building works and how portfolio construction works. All that book knowledge, all the tests that I passed, all the academia that I went through was much less valuable than actually getting into practice and doing it and seeing how money actually works in the real world. So if we're going to take this, because I want to provide some breakthrough action plans so people can actually use this plateau moment to figure out how they move in the, the, the step forward in a better direction, is if we have somebody exactly like you just explained, where you just consume, learn, consume, learn, but you just get build up all this knowledge where does the action come in? Let's kind of talk about what we can do. And here's some actionable things you can do. The first thing we talked about was take inventory of what you have and where you want to be. That's exactly right. You know, we think about all, all the times, uh, or we, we forget to remember all the time of the things that we do have at our disposal, the positives that we do have, the talents and passions that we do have. And if you don't think about what those things are, and ultimately where you want to be, then there's a chance you're going to miss it. Now, there's a fantastic saying all, that we hear all the time, right? Uh, ignorance is bliss, right? Yeah. So I think if you were going to take the opposite of that, uh, that the lack of ignorance or knowledge would not be bliss. Well, one of the things that I have found is that the more that we learn, the more educated we become, we allow these thoughts to creep into our mind. And mm-hmm. we have a good friend here in Nashville, and he kind of framed it this way. We have these things called limiting beliefs, these these. This voice in our head tells us these things that aren't possible, we can't get through, can't make sense of. And it's not until you start recognizing those things that you can actually start turning them around to use them as positives. Yeah. I mean, we talked about it. We did a show this morning that that talked about how the well has been poisoned for a lot of young people on the power of investing, saving, and that they have been told that wealth is given to you or passed down, not actually created. Yep. I mean, that's a limiting belief. That's exactly right. And it's, I think a lot of people, it's the same way when you're trying to figure out how do you recognize a problem? How do you figure out the path forward? You have to really train your brain to, to do these things so you understand what am I dissatisfied mm-hmm. with? What's the path, for, path forward? And then recognize what's causing you these mm-hmm. things that are holding you up. And what's in your control and not in your control. It's just like if you have the, the uh, limiting belief, you know, maybe I'm... I'm too old for my portfolio to actually continue making. I would reframe that to a truth that's, no, I still have a lot of years where I can let this money work for me. I can get it working. Uh, You talked about it. You know, if if you're someone who's unhappy with stock returns, right? You're unhappy with what the market's doing, but you're just investing purely in indexes. That might be something that's out of your control, right? That's not something you do have the power to influence. 
But there are definitely other things. You can work on the asset allocation. Exactly you can right. work on how much you're saving. You can work on when your goals are to retire. And that's what that leads to the next thing I had was write down three actionable steps that you can take over the next quarter to make things change. To actually make apply some of this knowledge you've been building up for years. Let's base this, because you don't eat the elephant all at once. You eat the elephant one bite at a time. I know that's a gross analogy, but it's it's appropriate in a lot of ways is because sometimes you do approach tasks that are very big. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this whole thing towards financial independence, you know, and I I bring back the Chris Hogan stat that when I read Everyday Millionaires, and you figure out that the average millionaire actually happens in their late 40s, Mm -hmm. It's not the stories that you see from the old school lifestyles of the rich and famous or MTV cribs where people are becoming millionaires in their 20s and in their 30s. There's actually an entire process. So you've got to figure out. So it's a journey. It's yep, a marathon. That's right. What are the three things you can do this quarter to evaluate and measure and make sure you're actually making positive steps in your financial life. And I think what people get so caught up in so often is they think these steps have to be huge steps. What are these gigantic leaps? No, it might just be, you know what? I'm going to pay off my credit card in full this month. If that's or you know what, I'm going to increase my 401k contribution to 5% this month. It's small tiny steps that you can take that over a compl- an entire working cycle can comp- compound to have a huge impact on your financial and the, life. And the money guy order of operations is probably a great place for you yeah, to start. If you're right. trying to figure out how do I figure out what the next thing I should do in the next 3 months. And the good thing is after you make it past the cash reserves or the $1000 you can keep ticking through the checklist until you get through the entire order of operations. Last thing before I kind of transition off of this, dreams do not become a reality without a plan. So you've yep. got to make sure right. you're recording these actionable steps. This is the last point before we move on to the next thing. Are you uncomfortable? Mm-hmm. I ask this with all seriousness because I think a lot of times people, when you're going to have action that is going to change you significantly, it's no. I'm going to bring it back to the analogy of working out. Right. But we have had so many conversations. Why do people, like I was even having this with my trainer, everybody skips leg day. Mm -hmm. Why does everybody skip leg day? Because nobody wants to be sore the next day. Everybody wants to have muscular legs and look good when they're walking around, but nobody likes to exercise your legs because it's one of the harder muscles that actually, it's just, it's not fun to exercise that. So the question when I ask people, are you uncomfortable? It's kind of that way financially Mm -hmm. too. If you have big dreams on what you want to do both financially or in your job, in your career, if somebody says no, they're not comfortable, they're not uncomfortable, I would probably tell you, unfortunately, you're probably doing it wrong. That's right. And and this is one of those things, especially when you're in your 20s, 30s, and even early 40s, you probably are going to have some periods where it's just not fun all yep. the time because you have to put in, you know, some dues. You have to figure out how you do the ten thousand hours to become an expert. There's going to be a lot of things that do make you that kind of challenge you. Challenge is good because it does make you stronger, fitter, and better. There's there's a lot of analogies here with clean eating, the exercising, and also good money management skills. You know, it's so cliche, but the saying, you know, it's you know, if uh, if you want something you've never had, you got to do something you've never done. You have to be careful of just getting, especially you know, a lot of folks. We'll see this all the time. They'll start out and they'll get their state documents done, and that's great. And they'll go out and get their employer matched on, that's great. But then they don't do anything for the rest yep. of their twenties, rest of their thirties, into their forties. You have to make sure that you are continually keep yourself uncomfortable, and your later self will one hundred percent thank you for it. It's a, it's a big transition. So let's talk about the next thing you need to be working on. This is, and I titled this, and we talk about it all the time. Failing to plan is planning to fail. Bo, you say this constantly. Yeah, you know, it's one of those idioms, I think, that it kind of sticks with you. You hear something that your parents say, and you just can't ever forget it. For me growing up, I always heard this. Something my mom always said to me, well, if you're failing to plan, you're planning to fail. And it could have been about anything. You know, it could have been about baseball practice or cleaning my room or whatever, or homework or projects. This is something that's huge, and we see this all the time in folks' financial lives. They just don't quite get it that you have to have a plan in place or there's a good chance you're not going to end up where you want to be. Well, it's it's the whole rudderless ship. You know, if you don't have a plan, I mean, you could have the biggest, most powerful ship, but if that, you know, big motor is not attached to a propeller and then they're having a rudder to to guide it, you could, this this ship is just going to sit in the harbor making a lot of noise, creating a lot of smoke, but it's not actually going anywhere. And I feel like that's a big thing that goes on when people don't have a plan is Mm -hmm. because... When you have a plan, it's going to at least let you see what each of the steps are that you need to do. And then, because I think a lot of people, 
skip steps and they don't understand that hey it's okay i'm gonna have to crawl before i walk and i'm gonna have to walk before i can Mm -hmm. run and and if you don't have a plan of action some type of plan you never know exactly where you are in that process you know we saw this in our business a number of years ago Brian. we used to always go to this conferences these conferences and they'd say hey you ought to think about who your ideal client is and write down a description of what that person looks like and then you should look at how many of your current clients kind of fit that mold whether it be age or assets or behaviors or whatever it may be. We had heard that for years and years and years and years, but we never did anything with it. It wasn't until we actually wrote down, hey, this is what the perfect client for us looks like in terms of a fulfilling, ongoing relationship. And it was amazing. We wrote that down. Those kinds of people started showing up. It goes back to, we, we've also said in many, and I, you know, it's don't get busy doing nothing. Yep. And I think th- sometimes as a business person, You think if I'm busy balancing the books, running payroll, making sure that I call clients or prospects, that I am doing everything right. Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes you do have to realize you are the CEO, just like you're the CEO of your personal financial life. You have to take some time to do some vision planning in there. And that's the part of what the the, the ideal client exercise did is because when I actually wrote down where I wanted to be, who I wanted to work for, and then compared that to, so I had a benchmark or a barometer of success, it woke up this invisible hand. I mean, it really does turn on your brain and you wake up this invisible hand because I couldn't tell you what I specifically changed in running the business, but yet every time we started having meetings to look Mm -hmm. at how are we doing on our clients that fit the ideal profile and you started noticing a trend that it just happened. It and did. I, it was amazing. I, I attribute a lot of that to writing down and having a, a just a process of what we are looking for opened up that inevitable hand and the invisible hand of action. And I think in your personal finance, you see this all the time. There's a very easy step that you can do, and it's start doing a net worth statement. Yeah. If you're someone who has not done a net worth statement, you don't know where you are, where you're going, what you've been doing, it's really hard to know if you are on the path, if you do have the plan in place, do the net worth statement. And it's amazing. That is the thing that you can do right now today that will wake up that invisible hand. And that that really is. That's a great breakthrough tip on for people in all your your you know net worth statements. I think if you're a business owner, new business owners, people wonder, do new businesses fall apart because people don't have the talent, the aptitude? No, they fall apart because of the lack of preparation. Most people don't realize it's going to take them three to four years of just dragging around, trying to get business, trying to get this thing working. Even if you're the most talented person in the world, you are walking in mud. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is. So you have to have a business plan where you have your best, your worst case scenario, and then you have what most likely will happen. And then you need to make sure you have enough liquidity to to solve that. that. That is a big part that most people skip that plan to make that happen. We we do this all the time. New business owners will ask, hey, I've got this great idea for this business and this is what's going to happen. It's going to look like this and this and this and this and this. The very first question we always ask is about that worst case scenario Mm because that's the one you really have to protect against. If you haven't thought through that, if you haven't put pen to paper, you are not setting yourself up for success long term. And I think it goes to... You know, we you talked about the net worth. Mm-hmm. I think other tools for basic proven financial planning, paying off debt. Oh, you know, yeah. th- let's talk yeah. about these because we we talk about this all the time. Is how do you lay out the basics for a proven financial plan? And you and I came up with a, a golf analogy. It was uh, you know we played we were you know we were fortunate. Uh, there's local charity here that we support, and we took the whole team. We did a big charity golf outing. You probably saw the pictures on Facebook. Uh, and so I guess that's why this analogy is here. But we thought that golf kind of was a great analogy for getting your personal finances in order. Because think about this. When you're talking about your planning, is that, and this is what, like, because people all the time will troll us on, on YouTube or mm-hmm. whatever because we've done some Dave Ramsey content. I think what Dave, the, what he is so incredible at is that 80% of the population just struggles with debt. Yep. They can't get the basics of Good financial That's management, right. not letting credit cards take over. I consider that paying off debt is making good contact with the ball. The majority of golfers aren't even sub 100. They're yeah. horrible. And that's the way the average person is with money. They can't even make contact with the ball. They don't know how to hold the golf club. So Dave is great, and he gives you that introduction meeting 
on how to hold the golf club and then how to just pivot your shoulders so you just make good contact with an open face to the ball. That is 80% of the hard work is just the discipline yep. of making contact. But then, you know, I want you to know there's a step further. That's right. There's a, a order of operations. Yep. And what is what is the order of operations let somebody do? Yeah, so when you think about your order of operations, not only, okay, I, I know that I'm not supposed to be getting in debt, but how do I actually deploy my army of dollar bills to go work for me? Do I have my cash reserves? Am I getting my employer match? Do I have... Uh, money for the rainy day, the full emergency. Do am, uh, am I doing my Roth IRA? Am I doing my HSA? All those types of things where you're tweaking your situation around the edges and getting it all nice and neat, that's going to the range. Yeah, yeah. That's actually showing up and making sure that not only are you making contact, but you're actually hitting the ball the distance you want to hit it, with the club you want to hit it, with the right loft you want to hit it, and all those things. That's putting in the time to make sure that the game that you're going to experience later is going to be a good game. Now, and there's a third step, and this is why, and I love this analogy, is because the first time you go to a golf course and you actually see a professional or somebody who knows what they're doing, you go see them hit a golf ball, and the ball flight path is just, just different. different. I mean, different. when you watch these guys boom 300 yards, you go, my ball doesn't go that way. And you, you realize that there's another element that didn't happen that they have working yep. in their golf game. It's the same way with your financial life. We can give you, Dave Ramsey gives you the basics of good financial man, management. That's making contact mm -hmm. with the ball. Bo is right. The financial order of operations from the Money Guys show, that's the basics of putting the time in the range and getting through. But then there's the step that's going to make you to professional grade and take you to levels of wealth and success. And this is what we take the most flack for. Mm -hmm. This is why I tell you, when you're under 40 years of age, don't focus on paying off low interest right. mortgage debt. Get the army of dollar bills going because there's going to be so much time in your 40s and 50s to pay off that debt. This is also the part when I say save 20 to 25% yep. as fast as you can, especially in your 30s and 40s and beyond, not just 15%. This is what we call when you're putting your hip into it because a really <laughs> good golfer realizes that the power of a golf swing is when you can actually coil your body mm -hmm. around. That's why golfers have back issues and they use it as a spring, you know, as essentially a spring action that comes around and just pounds the ball. I mean, it unleashes. That's what we're doing. It's that now realize there's only 10 to 20% of people that can do a proper golf swing that makes the ball path flight go up instead of just up and over. Mm -hmm. It's the same way with financial yep. management. So understand laying out the ba those basics and what you have to conquer in the beginning, the basics, before you can get to advanced strategies. That's exactly right. Now let's talk about um, the next thing that I want people to understand. And this is the number one decision that can derail your finances, mm -hmm. and that is you need to be willing to adjust and change course. You know, one of the things that we do all the time, Ryan, is we always help people with like uh, projections of like retirement and growing their portfolio. And we always just do this thing where we assume a static rate of return. Every year you're going to make 6% yep. or 7 But we know that life doesn't work that way. When it comes to making financial decisions, you can sit down and you can write out the very best plan in the entire world. But odds are, at some point along the way, things are going to change. It's yep. not going to go exactly like you planned, exactly like you laid out. Well, I think it's also interesting is that when I did research, and this was something I saw the conference board every year puts out a happiness factor, mm -hmm. fulfillment of, of employees, over half of workers are unhappy with their job. That saddens me. because it, it does. When you think about being at work, you spend more time at work a lot of times than you do at home, more time with your work family than with your actual family. If you're unhappy, that just does not, that's just sad. It's a really sad thing. And I think a big part of it is, is most people do not realize the power they play in their own financial life is that instead of being the hero of an epic adventure where they are conquering and, and, and pushing themselves into uncomfortable places mm -hmm. to go to the next level, they're actually just playing a supporting role and floating. Player, you yeah. said that, you said it earlier in today's show is that you were like, you know, some people are going to be doing this and do this, and they're going to wake up and they're in their 30s. They're going to wake up and they're in their 40s. That is not what I want you to have. I want you to take an active role in everything you're doing. So let's kind of talk about what's those breakthrough things you can do to get you through those sticking points. Yeah, number one is don't choose to be passive. Don't be that person just lets life, hap lets life happen to you. Make sure you have an active role. What are your goals? What are your passions? What are your dreams? What are the things that you can be investing in? And how are you pursuing those on a daily basis? You know, we used to have the whiteboard that we kept in my office, Brian, and, it, and I think we wrote on there, 
Uh, what are we doing today to be the firm that we want to be five years from now? And the reason we did that is we wanted every decision we make, every action we, we, we take to move us towards that ultimate goal, not just sit back and be comfortable and boring and lazy. It, it, it's so good because there's, there's also this skill that I want people to develop that I consider it kind of the perspective skill. And I want to give you two examples. One's personal and then one's another one is that have you ever noticed – You'll have a relative or a friend, and they'll have a health scare. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll have a heart attack. They get told that they're pre-diabetic. And a person that you – every time you go visit them and they have two pounds of bacon on their plate, you come back to their house, and you, you, know, and you see they're, they're eating vegetables, right. more color on their plate than you've ever seen. And you realize what happened is, is that they had a health scare, and it re-centered their focus. They mm -hmm. became hyper-focused on, hey, I don't want to die, yep. so they got scared. I can tell you that, you know – the whole reason I have this business is that my father got sick when, um, you know, in, in the two, or 2000, in 1999 and 2000, and I was working all these hours. I was making great money, but I was like, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not spending any time with the family. You know, I don't know that this is the way I planned on my life going. So I had this clarity that came to me just because I had this earth shattering thing of my father getting sick and then passing away. I want everybody out there. To not have to have that hyper-focus scare of a health thing or they lose someone and it gives them the clarity of knowing what's important to them, that they choose their decisions there. I want you just to be deliberate. Yeah. You just can be the person that says, I am going to focus on being an active person in my success. What are the things I want to do in life? What are the things I don't want to do in life? And then how do I prioritize and make sure I'm, I'm doing things when they're supposed to be done. Because I think most of us, it's that whole supporting role. Yep. We're just floating through life, and that's not going to get you to, to understanding your why. I love that, Brian. And I think you know one of the exercises that we work through sometimes with clients is we'll have them write down, all right, what are all the goals you want to achieve? You know, And they'll say, okay, well, I want to you know, pay off my mortgage, and I want to buy a beach house, I want to pay for my grandkids' college education. Mm -hmm. and, I want, and we have them list every goal, and then we say, okay, well, now prioritize them. What are the things that you want the most, yep. right? And if you start working through your priorities like that, you'll start to you'll start to answer questions like, okay, maybe I don't need to buy that thing or do that thing or have that expense. It's going to be better if I let that money roll into my army of dollar bills. If you can think about that in terms of the ultimate goals you're trying to achieve, it will change you from being a passive bit player to being that epic hero in your superhero story. It's kind of like you hear people, they put up a picture of a Caribbean vacation that they're saving money for, or uh, you hear people hanging up a pair of shirt, a shirt or pants or even swim trunks or a bikini mm. that they want to fit into. Mm -hmm. it's, it is keeping it's your that. eye on That's that exactly goal right. that, you, that you're hoping to, to reach. Yep. And then the, I wanted to close this out before we moved on to the next thing was you have to realize your goals will change. Everything yeah. we've talked about is not going to be the smooth path. Remember when I was talking about the business owner and earlier in today's show, I said, you need to do three plans. You need to do what you think will happen. You need to be a holy cow, Mabel, we're going to be rich. And then you got to be like, I can't believe I did this. This is horrible. So it's three things. You got your best, your worst, and then you got what you think is going to happen. Life kind of is going to throw you curveballs yep. naturally throughout the process. You need to be prepared to shift. Yep. And it can be negative, meaning that you're going to either lose your job or you're going to have a health scare. Mm -hmm. It's good if you have those order of operation basics like cash reserves, insurance, and other things that happen, but it can also be good. Yep. I can tell you when I started this company, I still remember I told you, you know, my dad got sick. I went in there and talked to my boss and I told him a number. I said, if I can just make this, I want to focus on my family. I want to focus on church and I just want to get away from some of the things I'm doing because this thing with losing my father has rocked my world. So if I can go start this company and build this lifestyle firm and make X, I told him a number, Yep. I will be happy. Now, here's the truth of the matter. Your life will evolve and your goals will evolve. We do, I was trying to figure out, I think we do like 30 times the number I told him, <laughs> almost like, it's not month, I mean, it is, it's, it's, we do three times, three to four times that number every yeah. month yep. here at the firm. And you're like, well, did you get greedy? No, I'll tell you what happened. I love seeing employees, like we just had, Brianne just passed the CFP. That's we right. had to have a big celebration. I know Carter's building a house. Mm -hmm. You're building a house. Yep. We got babies being born. I mean, it's just one of those things where you get excited and you realize it's bigger than me. Mm -hmm. And as this thing started picking up traction, and then a lot of that is the money guy shift. Right. You guys, if you would have ever told me we were going to be reaching, you know, half a million over, you know, getting close to a million mm -hmm. people a month, 
It's wild. I would have told you, you got to be kidding yeah, me. I mean, it, it, the numbers are just insane. So your goals will evolve. And I want to tell you, roll with it. Embrace it. Yep. Both the good and the bad. You just under, you need to understand, but have a plan and understand your core basic things like order of operations so you don't get sidetracked by it. I think that's so beautiful, Brian. That's actually a perfect segue. When you think about like adjusting adjusting your goals. A lot of times, you know, we talk about the abundance cycle and what abundance means. Well, a lot of times abundance just means financial independence for someone until they reach financial independence. Then it starts talking about legacy and impact and the things that they can have. And we think that the last thing you should do to really help propel your wealth building is focus on the what, or don't focus on the what and not the why. Yeah, because so many people, I think if you ask people, why do you want to be financially independent? They go, I want to be rich. You know, there's even, you know, I want to be rich. Who doesn't want to be rich? I mean, that's the that's that's the what. Yeah. That's yep. not the why. If you tell me I want to be rich, that really is a side effect. It is a what. And and this is the trend. We go to content creation conferences. Mm-hmm. And I've noticed something. We've been going to these things for a long time now. And I've noticed a trend recently, and I've even noticed in the curriculum yep. of some of the courses. There are so many people going to these conferences and they're focusing on the monetization of their content creation before they even understand kind of the, why am I doing this? Yeah, they're focused on, how. okay, well, how do I turn this into business to make money? Not that, why am I sharing this information? And that concerns me because I think that if you don't, because it's going to be Mm short-lived. I mean, I will tell you, we have inspired so many shows. You know the only ones that are still being produced? The ones that had it right. I mean, I think about some of the guys we meet at the conferences that we've become friends Mm -hmm. with over the years, and then I find out they were listening to our stuff. The ones that are successful have a why, exactly a passion right. behind it, because you're going to find out that, you know, this isn't going to work just off of desire of being rich. Yep. It's just because there's going to be things that those roadblocks that we keep talking about in this show are going to come up. And if you don't have the passion, if you don't have the talent, if you don't have the energy, you'll never be able to overcome all that stuff. Yeah. So I think that's exactly right, Brian. There are these uh, roadblocks or things that can like discourage you. But even also, sometimes you you hit the what. Yeah. Sometimes, just like you said, your what is, okay, I want to have this income goal and then I'll be good. If you don't have a why behind the what, then once you do it, you're just left there looking around saying, okay, well, now what? We had a Twitter follower yeah. ask that question. Hey, I've done this and I've done that and I've accomplished and I've achieved that. And well, now now what? Now what? Yeah. You got to stop looking for what and start answering the question, why? Exactly. Why am I doing the things that I'm doing? That's beautiful. We didn't even talk about that in show planning. So that was great. But that is, it ties into the talent. Because that is, because that is, everybody says, now what? Mm-hmm. And they should say, now why? Why, why am it, I doing man. this? I mean, it really is. So let's talk about breakthrough. Let's this is where you, you need to do, take a talent and passion inventory. Yep. What is the things that are getting you excited? I mean, physically write it down. You've heard me say it. A dream does not become a reality until it's recorded. So make sure you're writing this stuff down. And look, there's nothing wrong with being honest about what you're good at. Brian, I've heard you say this. You don't say it as much anymore, but you say this all the time. And I remember being a young, moldable young man. You used to tell me, hey, I, I can't slam dunk a basketball. I can't hit a home run, uh, and I don't have a 50-inch vertical. But man, I'm good with money, and I've always <laughs> been good with money. And thank God that you recognize that that was your passion because now through this Money Guy show, you're able to impact millions of folks because you recognize what that passion was and how you could share it with the world. Well, I think, and pay attention, I think it's a good thing if you can go ask people around you, what do you think I'm good at? I mean, because I think if you would asked any of my buddies from high school, they'd say, Brian is the guy who always has coupons. I don't know how he has any girls to go out on dates with him because he has a $7 date. You know, I mean, there's all these things that were just kind of already indicators that I might have had a different relationship with money than most people around yep. me. So it, it makes sense. Ask your friends, family members, what are things that they perceive that you are different than others? Because that's what you're, that's really your goal is you're trying to figure out what you are world class at. You know, I've told you about that client. When I first started talking about it, he's a prospect of the show, a listener of the show, and he had all these successful adult children. And I asked him, I said, how did you create – and it's a broad range. I mean, you got you got people in professional things, and then you got people in labor industries, and they're all hyper mm-hmm. successful. I said, what did you tell your kids so that they would be this successful? He said, I told them to very quickly figure out what their – world class or in the top 5% in the world at. Yep. And if they can figure out that skill set, I figure even a world class stylist yep. is going to make lots of money. And it's That's true. Right. You know, you hear about all these things with politicians getting $1000 haircuts. Uh-huh. That somebody is Somebody's making those bucks. 5%. So you can do about anything if you're in the top 5% and probably be rewarded 
if you can figure out the talent. So once again, it's not focusing on the what, mm -hmm. it's focusing on why am I good at this and what is the purpose, what is the fulfillment? Because I can tell, promise you guys, if your goal is I just want to be rich, you're going to get to rich if you're so lucky, mm -hmm. and you're going to realize it's kind of empty. Yep. So you better have the why figured out because life is going to be pretty empty otherwise. Exactly right. So let's kind of close this out, Bo, and bring it home. We've kind of talked about several things people can do. Mm -hmm. I always think all these points, these roadblocks, can actually be celebrations Absolutely. on your journey to becoming financially successful because they're letting you break through those plateaus. Just like we were talking about when you're doing muscle training or if you're working on your eating, things are hard at the beginning, but if you will keep and you'll, you'll create a deliberate plan, you will break through these plateaus right. and you'll look back and you go, how did I get here? It's a talking head song. It really is. I think it's so, and we, you keep using the word plateau, and I think that's so beautiful because I, I, sometimes when like tragedy strikes or when like there are really negative, bad financial things that happen to us, we have to get in fight or flight mode. Yeah. That's when you have to like respond and react and make very quick decisions. If, if you're plateauing and you recognize, wow, I just don't seem to be changing, that's a great opportunity to do this self assessment. Thank goodness you're not in one of these fight or flight times where you're like, oh, I got to change something. But no, I don't, I don't have to change something. I get to change something. I get to positively impact what the rest of my life is going to look like. And here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to follow these steps. I'm going to understand that I don't need to just learn. I need to take action. I'm not going to forget to make a plan. I'm going to be willing to adjust. And I'm going to also understand what's my why, not just what's the what. If you can do those things, you're setting yourself up for success. Well, let's go ahead. Let's accelerate. Let's do even better because, guys, we have a brand new thing. We've talked about it on the last mm -hmm. two shows, but I want you to, if you have not taken us up on this, Go to moneyguy.com and check out our resource page. Oh, yeah. And guys, there's already great stuff there. There's a wealth multiplier. There's a net worth. You guys are blowing those things up. There's also some tax guides. But I will tell you, we've already brainstormed. We have some ideas, Bo. Financial order of operations, yep. go get some love. We, I mean, there's some really some cool, cool stuff, resources. Connor. You've got to go to moneyguy.com. Go out there and look at our resources and then I think you're going to, you know, and here's the thing. It's free. It costs you absolutely nothing. And then here's another thing, because I mentioned this on an earlier recording we did this morning, is that you've got to make sure if you like our content, you're probably going, is there stuff that we couldn't get on there because the show is limited to 30 to 55 minutes? And the answer is yes. So we're yep. putting a lot of that content right into our blog post, putting out brand new yep. content on the website. So go check it out moneyguy.com, and this all is nicely packaged up with the abundance cycle. You're like, how can these guys keep giving away so much free stuff? The whole purpose is you come, learn, apply, grow, and then one day you're going to reach this great level of success. Mm -hmm. It is going to be one of those things you're going to look back and go, holy cow, how did I get here? And then you're going to say, I need some help. This yep. is getting where I need to look over my shoulder. I need a co-pilot with this. And you will remember who helped you get there. And that's it's right. the Bound Wealth. It's the Money Guy team. And that's when the abundance cycle kind of goes full circle. I love it. So, guys, thanks so much for the show. We Hopefully, all these things are going to help you break through and figure out how you take your success to the next level financially because all these things will speed up your process to creating wealth. If you are out there in iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio world, and you haven't had a chance, we live stream some of these shows. So if you come and participate in one of our live streams, we actually have a chat going. When we turn off the record button, we're actually going to hang out with all the folks that are here in our, our live on our. Uh, live chat, and we're going to answer some Q&As. We're going to give away uh, some swag. So if it's not something you've checked out yet, make sure that you do. Money Guy team, out.